Right, we've now got the SNP spokesperson, Pete Wishart. Pete Wishart. And thank you very much, Mr Speaker. So here we go. The coveted no deal is now in touching distance. The dance of the no deal seven veils is now down to its Brexit underwear. The easiest deal in history will now mean the UK leaving on Mongolian terms. And the absolute rubbish we had to listen to about oven-ready deals and holding all the cards is now just the stuff of grotesque bad jokes. And whose fault is it? Well, not his or this cabal of Tory anti-EU obsessives. It's all the fault of these Europeans. How dare they ask the Tories to stand by what they agreed? How dare they ask for a level playing field and to retain the integrity of their single market? The EU must have the patience of saints to try and negotiate with these clown shoe wearing goalpost shifters. And as we've just heard, the EU once again offered to have intensive talks. It's back in your court Secretary of State. And he somehow expects Scotland to go along with this disaster. Well, there's a saying that he'll know as a proud Scot, which will be Scotland's response to this. He can go a woe and bile his heed. Independence is now the settled will of the Scottish people, with 58% of Scots now in favour. So here's a proposition to the Secretary of State. Why doesn't he just go off and get his no-deal Brexit, if that's what England indeed wants? And in Scotland, we can now secure our independence, what our people want, which will allow us to design our own future European relationship. Surely there's nothing wrong with that. He gets what he wants, we get what we want. Will he agree to that at last and say goodbye to his rotten union and his rotten no-deal Brexit? Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Um, as ever, I'm in awe um, of the member for uh, Perth and North Perthshire's ability to, uh, in a very short period, bring so many metaphors together. And what can only, one can only describe as a, uh, a, a car crash of similes. The government, according to him, is wearing seven veils and clan shoes while also shifting goalposts. Um, I'd, I'd have to say that I'd, I'd love to see that, uh, that circus performance, but I suspect that I'll have to wait because the SNP conference, I think, has been cancelled this year. The second thing that I'd like to say in response to him is that he refers disparagingly to this deal as a Mongolian deal. I don't know what Mongolia has ever done to offend the people of Scotland, but we in the UK value our friendship with the people of Ulaanbaatar and others, and certainly we don't believe that this looking down on other peoples in other nations is appropriate. It may be appropriate for, uh, for the uh, atavistic nationalism which uh, some SNP supporters avail themselves of, but uh, for those of us uh, who believe in the Union, we believe in friendship amongst all nations. Uh, his final point about uh, uh, working together, I absolutely agree. Devolved administrations must work with us and we must work with them in order to make sure that as we leave the European Union, the communities of all parts of the United Kingdom prosper. One of the things I do regret is even though I value my close working with his colleague, uh, the Minister for the Rural Economy, Fergus Ewing, uh, one of the things is that unfortunately, Scottish Government policy would mean that we would be back in the common fisheries policy. That would mean the people of Scotland's coastal communities would lose out. I'm sure he wouldn't want that, and that's why I hope we can continue to work together in order to reap the benefits of the sea of opportunity that Brexit will bring.